Now, it might not look it, especially when you see all the snow on the ground, but this is gonna be the only warm day for at least the next week. So, let's go to Philadelphia. Welcome to Philly. I'm surprised I don't come here more often. I, I mean, I live literally on the border between New York and Pennsylvania, so it's not that far for me to come here. But anyway, before we step out into the cold to stuff our face, big thank you and shout out to this video sponsor, Surfshark VPN. You guys heard me talk about Surfshark VPN a lot, and I've always emphasized that this is something you definitely need, especially right now, because we're so connected online, because we're all online more than ever these days. And if you don't know, a VPN is a virtual private network. You know how like when you type about something Thing or a brand or when you're chatting with your friends about something all of a sudden that brand or whatever you're talking about start appearing everywhere on your social medias on your phone it's pretty creepy especially sometimes you feel like you're, you're actually talking about it and something always seems to be listening anyway what Surfshark VPN does is that it encrypts your data before it goes over the internet so people you don't want having access to your private information won't have access to it they also have something called hack lock ID so if someone's trying to access something like your email you're gonna get notified right away and on the entertainment side if you're done watching all the Netflix shows that you want to watch more you can actually change your location to a different country and kind of trick Netflix into thinking that you're actually over there so they give you access to that particular country's video catalog or if you're not in the US but you want to have access to something like Crunchyroll you can do that using Surfshark VPN anyway if you want to give this service a try go to the link down below and use my promo code dumpling you're gonna get 83% off your order plus three months for free and you can try it out for 30 days if you don't like it for whatever reason get your money back and use it to go buy some dumplings or a cup of coffee Coffee, whatever you want. All right, let's go see what this Chinatown has to offer. This is the warmest day it's been for a while. 41 degrees. Woohoo! I never actually explored this Chinatown before. Every time I come to Philadelphia, it's usually all about the cheesesteak. So today, because it is such a nice and warm day, I'm just gonna walk around, see what kind of food I can find here. I think this is the oh, there we go. There's the gate. First off, let's get something warm and soupy in me. This looks like a good place. Silky Duck House, the best of Philly. All right, I got a three treasure of rice, which is three different types of meat on top of rice, plus a spicy nummy pig ear. So bacon is covered. Uh, let me go across the street. This place, <laughs> I like the name, it's just called Chinese restaurant. Very vague. What do they serve? Ooh, chicken noodle soup. Need some of that. This place, soup dumplings, steamed dumplings, and ban mian. Oh, mixed noodles. Yeah. Oh, okay, now I gotta go find a place to eat this. Oh, this place looks good too. Sha Xian Xiao Chi. Whoa, lying out the door at this place. All right, I'll be back for that. Oh, this place looks great as well. Wow, Philly Chinatown, you got some hidden gems here. Oh, this is some breakfast stuff. Salty tofu, which is amazing. And they have uh, fried dough, which is awesome. Radish cake. Oh, this place. Go get some. Oh, this place is great. It's got all these kanjis over here. I got myself a sesame kanji. Right, though, I got a salty tofu and 
all different types of zhongzi here. Taiwan zhongzi, Xiangang zhongzi. This is the sweet sticky rice one. This is more like northern zhongzi. And these are southern ones with the meat inside. This is why I wanted to come to Philly on a sort of a warm day because I knew I'm going to be eating a lot of this stuff at my car because I think dining in is still not uh, not allowed here. Whoa, just a short two blocks walk and this thing has already leaked. Start with these noodles. I think these, I think these are peanut noodles. Mmm. Mmm. That was deserving of being my first bite of food of the day. Peanutty, spicy, scrumptious noodles. This thing ain't fancy, but it is tasty. Just a bit of peanut sauce, some sriracha, some scallions. Noodles have amazing texture. Ultra slurp. Mm. Getting the hiccups. I feel like I'm getting nervous in front of <laughs> such delicious noodles. Oh, I need a sip of soup. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, the soup is tremendous. Oh, I wasn't even gonna drink the soup. This is from the uh, Peking Duck Place. And usually when you get a Chinese barbecue, they always give you a set of soup. Usually I just ignore it. I don't even ever drink the soup because oftentimes it's not that good. This is amazing. Oh my gosh, it's just simple bone broth with just like a scallion floating in here. But it's just packed full of flavor. This is made with pork bone for sure. You can taste the meat. They use a lot of ginger, which just enhances the flavor and it warms your body up. Mmm, I feel so much warmer now. Whoa, oh, look how pretty. It's like a tiny litter of dumplings. And look at this. The meat juice has steeped all the way through the bottom. Oh, those are so good. By the way, the noodles and the dumplings, a total of $7. What an incredible deal. They're not all that juicy, but look how thin the wrapper are on these dumplings. This thing is all substance. That giant meat filling. It's just packed full of flavor. I feel like the reason why they're not as juicy is because they've been steaming for a while. If these just came out fresh, they'd be even more perfect. Mmm. That one was really juicy. You don't need any dipping sauce with these dumplings. So perfect the way they are. Of course, with my hot oil, it'll be even better. All that juice has soaked into the bottom because it's been sitting on the steamer so long. If you get these fresh out of the steamer, the juice is still contained inside the buns. And even now, when I say it's not that juicy, it doesn't mean it's dry. Look, look at this. Look at the meat glistening. All I'm saying is it could be juicier and even better than it is right now. If you ever come to Philadelphia Chinatown, make sure you go to the Chinese restaurant. You, you know what I mean, that that one. Round one of food, I'm already so impressed. Next up, I got spicy and nummy pig ears and three treasure meats over rice. That's my number one recommendation for you guys. If you're not familiar at all with how Chinese barbecue works, just go into a Chinese barbecue place, you know, wherever you see a hanging duck and just tell them three treasures over rice. And typically the best treasures are duck, soy sauce, chicken, and roast pork, and that's what I got right here. Look how pretty this is. You guys see the little bits of stuff on top of the greens and the meat? That's that's because they poured the meat juice on top of everything to kind of tie everything together. Welcome everybody to the party. Just get everyone mingling. That is a delicious move. I'm already having like super high hopes for this dish. Nice pieces of char siu. Beautiful color. Juicy roast duck. And Oh, they cut me the wrong chicken. This isn't soy sauce chicken. This is scallion chicken. Still good. I'm not going to complain too much. And I got the spicy and nummy pig ears because you don't see pig ears often cooked this way. And if you guys never tried pig ears, it's something I highly recommend. Because with that cartilage inside, that texture is incredible. Plus, help you hear better. Mmm. That's good scallion chicken. Also, they give you a lot. I think this is about nine dollars. Mmm. Chow is great. Nice hit of sweetness and smoky flavor. Oh, that's good duck. 
I got the three treasures over rice, but I was really just going after the duck. I mean, it's called a duck house. I had high expectations for this duck and it did not disappoint. Fatty skin, super juicy meat. And what I kind of expect out of a good roast duck is first of all, I want that skin to melt and I want that fat to render on my tongue. Also with all that meat juice drizzled on, even the veggies good. It's also funny how like in the West, if you think of treasure, probably think of like gold coins or pirates, treasure chest or gems, diamonds, something like that. For Asians, it's like roast duck, soy sauce chicken, scallion chicken. That's what we consider treasure. I think it makes more sense. I mean, can you eat a diamond? You think when Tom Hanks was all casted away, which treasure would he rather have? I think so. Oh, that's great big ear. I love that crunch of the cartilage. They made this so fragrant. There's five spice powder in there for sure. Chinese peppercorn for the numminess. Chilies for the heat. This thing's got everything. Flavor, texture, crunch. If you're a pig ear lover, recommend getting that. Final food item. I got the Chinese fried dough and the salty tofu soup. This is one of my all time favorite breakfast items in the world. Soaking tofu with little bits of preserved vegetables, scallions, chilies, little baby dried shrimp. You can make this thing into a dessert or savory item. And if you're from the North, like I am, savory is the way to go. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Mm. Oh, she put a bunch of garlic in here as well. Oh, that Angie knows her flavors. Mmm, this is loaded with garlic. And this soup is so tender, you can eat it through a straw. And then what I like to do, dunk it in. When you're eating this, treat it kind of like a cigar. You gotta take the ends off so it reveals that spongy interior. Dunk that in. The first dunk is not gonna be the most delicious dunk, but this one, when you soak it in, that thing just absorbs so much of the broth and the ingredients and the flavor. That is how you eat the tofu soup with the Chinese fried dough. This is better flavored than a lot of the tofu soups I had. Also, this is called tofu brains. In Chinese, we call this tofu nao. Oh, another favorite, Chinese black sesame paste. Although this one doesn't seem very pasty, it's more soupy. Usually this thing is very, very thick. Mmm. Oh, this is so good. It, it feels like more like a black sesame drink than black sesame paste. Also, I never had this thing cold before. Oh, this is delicious. Mmm, every single bite is so sweet and fragrant. I love that auntie shop. If you're in Philadelphia, you haven't been there yet, go get the tofu brains, get the sesame paste, and the other stuff's probably really good too. Mmm, round two. Sha Xian. Let's see what they have here. Three dollar wonton soup. Fish ball. So this is a Fujian place. Gotta say this menu looks so much better than, than this menu with look how many broccolis there are. It's just invaded this restaurant. Oh, I didn't even see this. It, it says uh, 最排骨饭. Drunken ribs over rice. That sounds really good. A lot of roasted fish places have been popping up uh, all over the country. That one is called searching for fish. I wonder what fish they're searching for. Could it be Nemo? Is that is that where Nemo ended up? Hope it's not Nemo. I heard good things about that chicken rice. Hello, uh, set one. Yep. Look at this cherry blossom matcha. I think I need that. Whoa, this is so pretty. We got a lantern, like a lantern mousse. This is a teapot, Earl Grey mousse, raspberry white peach cream center. That looks great. All right, we're gonna have a little dessert cherry blossom intermission. I ordered the wrong cake. I wanted the, the teapot, but I was just like staring at the lantern. So I was like, lantern. Spring and stomach, it didn't connect. But this is still pretty. Oh, this is great. Not only is it pretty on the outside, it is delicious on the inside. Mm. 
That is so good. It's the softest mousse, and it's all sitting on top of a cookie, and there's cake on the bottom, too. I love this place. If I lived here, I would just come here all the time. This is so good. I mean, I'm a huge fan of any mousse, but this thing has it all. Looks, complexity, even though I think that teapot mousse is delicious as well. Not sad that I got this, especially because it's almost Chinese New Year. This thing is delicious and festive. Here's my drink. Put this through on the run in. If I have a hole in my mouth, you'll know why. Mmm. Oh, this thing is so smooth. If they serve stuff like this at a bar, I could fit right in. Watch. Oh. Yeah, that went down smooth. What an amazing little place. You guys gotta come here and try this out. Now let's go eat some more. A panda and a unicorn. Did you guys know there was a time where pandas were thought to be mythical animals? Or, sorry, right here. Anyway, let's go check this place out. I need that sign posted on my chest. Check out this place's menu items. It goes from avocado toast to spaghetti to tomahawk steak. Ooh, pork floss cake. Dorian burnt cheesecake. Tofu cheesecake. So I popped into a, a second cafe because <laughs> they're right next to each other. And you don't see a lot of brunch places in Chinatown. <sighs> that also serves tofu cheesecake and fresh tea. Tell you what, just from the looks of this, this just looks so pretty. I mean, usually cheesecake is it's kind of boring looking. Look at this, a little green grape. Looks like a bit of chrysanthemum, rosemary, and blackberry. But this thing just looks silky. Whoa. Dance, baby, dance. Any clubs want to hire this cheesecake? Because this thing can twerk. Since it's a tofu cheesecake, this, this is healthy, right? All it tastes is amazing cheesecake. I mean, you might get a little bit of the tofu texture, but this just tastes like delicious, heavenly cheesecake. Mm. So creamy, silky smooth with that beautiful crumbly crust. Mm. Whoever said tofu is boring. Today I'm proving to you, it is not. You're just eating it wrong. When I start up my cooking channel again, I'll have these recipes for you guys. Trust me. When I was in college, everybody hated tofu, but the only way people ever ate tofu was to put it raw into salad. Not a good way to eat tofu. So many better ways. And now, even in dessert. That is delicious. I walk past this place, black truffle pork soup dumpling. Let's go get some of that. <laughs> what is this? Smelly, smelly pot. That looks like a toilet. So good news and bad news. The good news is the truffle soup dumpling, only $8. That's the cheapest I've ever seen truffle soup dumpling sell for. The bad news is, they don't have it. So because that kind of made this a poopy situation, I'm getting the smelly pot. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. Hope it doesn't actually remind me of a toilet. All right, my smelly pot is here. Not that smelly. Fatty beef on top with mushrooms and intestines, sprouts and tofu. Let me ask him why this is called a smelly pot. I mean, it, it, it smells good. So it should be called a good smelling pot. A few minutes later. Okay, apparently it's the smelly pot because they're using stinky tofu in intestines, which could be a little smelly. Yeah, that does kind of smell like a bathroom. But I feel like the intestines are smellier. A lot of you guys love stinky tofu, so this is just my own personal opinion. Don't get upset with me. I think it tastes the same as regular tofu, but with a stink. Yeah, texture, flavor-wise, it's just a regular tofu. Except it smells like it just went to the bathroom. People say that they like eating stinky tofu because they, li they like that stinky aroma. And since I always felt the tofu's, the flavor and texture, it, it tastes the same. The only difference is that stinky aroma. I've, I've always joked that people who like stinky tofu just really likes eating regular tofu, but you know, in the bathroom. Not bad. It's not that stinky. I feel like there's a lot of other ingredients here that kind of negated the extra stink of the tofu. 
I feel like that intestine's way stinkier. I love intestines though. Such a great chewy and fatty texture. This is really good. This pretty much tastes like a mala tongue and like a miniature hot pot. Mm. Fatty beef is nice, fresh sprouts, fresh mushrooms, stinky tofu, not that stinky. I would just call this a mild BO tofu. I am kind of disappointed about the soup dumpling, but not too shabby. So the original plan was I got these food items. I was gonna come back here and eat it and then go walk around some more, but kind of got sidetracked. I'm really easily distracted when I see good food places. So, ah, oh, these been walking around in a literal freezer for the last hour. Hopefully, still good. Whoa, I wonder if these wontons are embarrassed. The wrappers are so thin and see-through. Really leaves nothing to the imagination. These are so good, $3. This wonton soup is amazing. How many times have I said that about something at a Philadelphia Chinatown today? Mmm. Wow, these are good. The wrappers, as you can see, are basically non-existent. Makes you almost wonder why they even bother wrapping it. Big old chunk of flavorful filling. It's meaty, bouncy, slightly peppery from the white pepper they added to this. Wow. The soup is super flavorful too. You get like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like eight wontons in here. Oh, this is a complete value buy. Mmm. You rather have a crummy double cheeseburger from McDonald's or handmade wontons with delicious soup and $3, that's including tax. No wonder there was a line. This is the chicken rice. You tossed me like a stone. You swept me off my feet. I can feel my bones. Mm. I still count. Super tender chicken. Mm. That rice is phenomenal. This is so good. I think I like the rice more than the chicken. Oh, yeah. Mm. I love chicken liver. This reminds me of the place we have in New York City. Super tender chicken. Crazy good rice. This is cooked in chicken broth. Seriously, so many good things in Philly's Chinatown. You got good dessert, you got good cheap dumplings and wonton, and you got the cheesesteak, which there's no way I can leave Philly without eating a cheesesteak. Let's go do that. One of the best sandwich places in Philadelphia, John's Rolls Pork. I come here pretty much every single time I'm in Philly. It's actually really difficult now because uh, the wait is about 45 minutes. You gotta call ahead of time. So I've been sitting in my car just waiting for my sandwiches to be made. And I got a cheesesteak and a Rolls Pork. The Rolls Pork, I think, is one of my favorite sandwiches in Philadelphia. But their cheesesteak, not too shabby either. Oh yeah, baby. I've been eating all day. And as soon as I saw that smiling pig on their walls, felt like this is my first meal. Check that out, 12 ounces of meat. And they don't do whiz, which I do love a good whiz steak. American cheese on a toasted sesame roll, loaded with steak. <laughs> Haven't had a real Philly cheesesteak in such a long time. Say hi, this is John, the owner. Dude, I love your, I love your cheese steaks. I love your rose pork. Oh, thank you, man, that's very nice of you. Every time I'm in Philly, I gotta come and uh, get one. That's great. Every bite from the roll to the mountain of meat and the melty cheese and the peppers too. Amazing. Before it gets too cold, I gotta take a bite of this rose pork. This is like how I initially found this place. <laughs> this feels like a good almost two pounds of stuff in here. Look at this. My personal bundle of joy. Oh my gosh, look at that mountain of pork. And they put all this juicing here. So the roll, look at this, it's just soaked with meat juice. Look how incredible this is. Look at this. This is enough meat to make at least two sandwiches. Oh my God. 
Oh, I made a mistake. I should have asked for some spinach on this. And usually I'm not into vegetables, but spinach goes so well here. There's so much juice in the meat and also in this roll. Mm. I have so much love for this sandwich. All right, I better focus and eat this before the cheese gets cold and the meat gets cold. Wouldn't want that. Wait an hour for the sandwich. Gotta eat it in this prime. But great day in Philadelphia. Really love exploring the local Chinatown. You guys got some great eats here in Philly and I'll definitely be back. I think there's a restaurant that's opening at five. I really wanted to try, but a little too late today. Next time, Philly. Anyway, thank you, Philadelphia, for your hospitality. And as always, all the places I went to, listed down below for you. So until we eat again, see you later. Hmm. How you doing?